Hi, I'm Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser, and I'm back with more real bargains. These are the bargains people are finding at thrift stores, yard sales, antique shops, all over. The people who I'm going to share real bargains about have given me permission to do so. Let's get started. First real bargain comes from an estate sale. This piece was an estate sale find, and they are it's a graduated pearl necklace. If you don't know what graduated pearls are, basically they're different shapes or different sizes of the pearl. So they graduate from small pearls in the back near the clasp in millimeters, how small they are, all the way and they get progressively bigger as you come to the middle of the necklace. So this particular graduated pearl necklace is three millimeters at the back near the clasp and then they get bigger. So they're four millimeters, five millimeters, six millimeters, seven millimeters until you get to the middle of the necklace here in the front about eight millimeters. So pretty big pearls at the front of this graduated pearl necklace. It has a 30 inch length. Okay so when you have a piece of pearl necklace like this you're gonna basically measure it from clasp to clasp open, laying down flat, not on your neck. So this is 30 inches. It falls about here. And basically anywhere a pearl necklace falls is good, right? So this was a estate sale find and my client told me about it during a video call. So the graduated pearl necklace, three millimeters for small, eight millimeters for big, had a platinum and diamond clasp. So the clasp at the back of the neck that will clasp the pearl necklace together is made of platinum and marked as such. And then it also had a diamond in it. Eh, maybe about a half of a carat of a diamond, but still a diamond in the clasp. You can see the diamond clasp here. It's a long necklace for pearls, not quite opera length, but long. Opera length pearls are really long. And this particular necklace was part of a jewelry lot that she bought at the estate sale. So she went into the estate sale and she bought all this jewelry. She paid $40 for all the jewelry that she got. And she told me that she got some costume jewelry and some fine jewelry. This piece was a real bargain. As she goes through all of these pieces, she probably got a lot of bargains in this lot because she got costume and fine jewelry. All of it will be worth more than the $40 that she paid. What's it worth? $4,000. That's right, $4,000 for a $40 investment. It actually was a lower investment than $40 because she got all this other jewelry with it. It's a beautiful example. Consistent color of the pearls, consistent luster of the pearls, and graduated pearl necklaces. They're difficult to, of course, obtain and, and to have a high quality one because all the luster and all the color has to be the same as you graduate or change the size of each pearl. That's a real bargain. This next real bargain is not from one video call, but from several video calls. This was kind of interesting to me because I did a video call with a client who actually booked another video call several months later. So in the first video call, I looked at this piece and this piece she acquired from the Goodwill bins. If you haven't shopped in the Goodwill bins, they are really interesting. They're usually in the big Goodwill stores, the big thrift stores. They're interesting because you actually will purchase the items based on weight. So you can get a whole lot of stuff, but you're paying by the pound. So they price the pieces by weight. If you look at this piece, this piece is a Boy Scouts of America sash with all of the Boy Scout badges on it. Badges that start from the very early days of someone being a Boy Scout all the way up until they achieve Eagle Scout status. And you'll notice this, the different patches. They're all, of course, hand sewn on. So somebody was helping this Eagle Scout or maybe they got their sewing badge and they sewed it on themselves. But basically you see the swimming badge and the first aid badge and the painting badge and the camping badge and snake bite safety badge, all different kinds of badges. They're really wonderful. It's a very large sash that she got it at the Goodwill bin. So she paid very little for it. Why? It's lightweight, right? And also the Goodwill bins are of course low, low cost. So she got it for under a dollar, she told me. So the first time I had a video call with her, I appraised this piece. And I told her this piece is worth about $700. And she said, okay, Lori, Dr. Lori, that's fine. Thanks so much. I appreciate your help. I liked it. I wanted to save it from just going into, of course, you know, the, the Goodwill or the trash. So once it gets to the bins, I, I really thought somebody did a lot of work to achieve all this. I wanted to purchase it. Okay. So several months goes by. She lists the piece and she comes back with an update for me. So we did the video call and I said, you know, whatever happened to the Boy Scouts of America sash? And she said, oh, Dr. Lori. She said, 
You were right about the time period of my sash, Dr. Lori, when you first appraised it, you told me it was from the 50s into the 60s, and this particular one was really in beautiful condition. Interestingly enough, I put it up and later, many months after you appraised it, I sold it, and I sold it for $1,100. That piece is a real bargain and it got sold. So that's a wonderful real bargain, understanding what she had and also how many people out there would want to save it too. A real good find from the Goodwill bins. <laughs> This next real bargain comes from a video call. And this piece you probably all recognize, a lot of you probably recognize them. And this one is of course a pedal car. They call them pedal cars because they're for kids and they're toys. This one's made and you pedal it, of course, with your feet. Um, so this piece is a fire engine with a with a hose and with a ladder and it's red and it's made by the Burns Company out of California, the Burns Novelty Toy Company. Now it's a couple things about pedal cars because some pedal cars are worth a whole lot of money. The nostalgic ones, the ones from the middle part of the 1950s and why were they so popular? Well, they were popular because this was the age really when muscle cars and other types of cars are coming of age late 50s into of course the 60s. So you're seeing that kids also want to have their own cars. Today kids have all different kinds of cars. They've got, you know, battery operated cars. They've got cars that actually they can um, utilize with, a, with even batteries or electric or whatever it might be. But what's funny about these car, this car is this car is a later version of the traditional 1950s pedal car, fire engine pedal car. And the utility pedal cars, the pedal cars that would be made for safety, like the ambulance pedal car or the police pedal car or the fire engine or fire truck pedal cars are sometimes more valuable than the run of the mill sedan pedal cars. So now pedal cars can be very, very valuable. Those from the 1950s and 60s. This one's a little bit later. So this one's a little bit younger. But the story that goes with this, young or old, this is a pretty good story. So my client's on a video call and says, well, Dr. Lori, you know, I watch your YouTube channel and I wanted to ask you about this. My girlfriend and I were driving to her parents' house and we're driving around and we go through the neighborhood and we see this guy and he's cleaning out a garage and he's putting all this stuff on the front curb. So, you know, I drive by it. I figure, well, we better get, my girlfriend wants to get to her parents' house, so I better get there. So I drive by it the first time. And then my girlfriend says, do you want to go back and look at that? So we go back and we kind of look and we drive by again. We see this pedal cart out at the curb. We drive by a second time. And then I think, well, you know what? I really should go out and, and investigate this. So he gets out of the car and he talks to the guy who's cleaning out the garage. And this guy lives there. He said, oh, we've had that a long time. Nobody ever played with it. It's kind of like new. If you want it, you can take it. If you want it, you can take it. This is music to our ears, right? So he says, well, wow, you know, thanks so much. I'd really like to have it. So he puts it in the back of the car. He gets it for free. F-R-E-E, -E, that's zero, okay? Gets it for nothing, puts it in his car, and decides to go off to, of course, his, his um, girlfriend's family. They have their day, whatever it is. He starts to look it up and he starts to get confused online a little bit about is this a vintage one or is this a newer one because they were revived in the 1990s. So this one is a nice piece. It's in beautiful condition. It's like new and it has its accessories. Accessories are always important. Doesn't matter what you're talking about. If you have the accessories or the pieces, that's going to increase value. I don't care if it's a Barbie doll with clothes. I don't care if it's a handbag with a little tassel attachment or a tag. I don't care what it is. If you've got the accessories, it's going to increase value. In this case, the accessories were the hose, right? The fire hose and the ladders, the ladders still attached to the piece. Notice, of course, the quality in which the piece is made to, you know, you've got the nice sturdy steering wheel and the big wheels and then the nice paint job. The paint job is very important for pedal cars as well. So he gets it for free and he calls me up and I'm happy to tell him that while it's relatively new, it's from the late 20th century, this piece still has some value at $600. That was a real bargain too. And I'm sure there's a little kid in his life or maybe in his future with his girlfriend that he at, that would enjoy this pedal car at some point. But free is still free, guys. That's a real bargain. This next real bargain comes from a video call. And this video caller said to me, Dr. Lori, I live in a real rural area and there are a lot of folks who have lived here. Their families have lived there for centuries. So 
for decades and decades, these people have basically been part of the family. So she said, you know, we're neighbors, but we've only been, we've living in this rural area for a long time. So I've known them for a long time. I've known their families for a long time. So a lot of people like to, in fact, um, make it worth our while when they're, when they're getting rid of some of their collectibles. So one of the ladies who lived around her call, said, I want you to have this piece. And so she said, no, 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 Mrs. I'll call her Mrs. Jones. No, 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 Mrs. Jones, I want to give you something for it because our family has been up here in this mountain area for a long, long time. And I want to make sure that, you know, you get something for it. She goes, I'll only take $2, Mrs. Jones says. So she hands her this brooch. This brooch is 18 karat gold with diamonds. And if you look at the diamonds, you're gonna notice that the diamonds are relatively early cut. So they're cut in such a way, they date to between the 1920s and the 1940s. They're cut in such a way that are relatively unusual. It's not the way that we cut diamonds now. Sometimes they call them mine cut. And mine cut diamonds are relatively rare and quite valuable. So Mrs. Jones says, I'll only take $2 from you for the, for the brooch. I want you to have the brooch. If you wanna pay me something, $2 is all I'll take. So the exchange takes place. My client calls me for a video call to find out about the brooch, to find out the years of the brooch. She wanted to know more of the history of the brooch. And as I started talking more about the brooch, I started to identify for her not only the mine cut diamonds and how rare they were, but also some of the markings that were on the brooch, including the, four, the 18 karat gold marking. So a beautiful brooch, notice the flowers. The idea of the two flowers is pretty popular from about the late 1920s until about the 1940s, just before World War II. So you can identify it by, of course, the style. The style and the motif of that brooch is really pretty typical of that early 20th century time period. The mine cut diamonds are really what made my eyes sparkle. I was like, wow, those are gorgeous. And there's about two total carat weight in the in basically the larger mine cut diamonds that are in the center of the rose or the flower. And then you'll notice there are a lot of smaller mine cut diamonds in there too on the on the piece in the setting. The setting is also reticulated or punched out. You can sort of see that in parts of the leaves. It's a beautiful, beautiful example of high quality workmanship, probably made in New York City in, of course, the 20s to the 40s. The piece has about five total carat weight of mine cut diamonds in the 18 karat gold setting. Value on the brooch is $750, and that's just for the 18 karat gold setting. The mine cut diamonds bring it up another thousand bucks, and that's $1,750 for this brooch. She got it for $2 and a long, long history of being close neighbors. That's a real bargain too. This next real bargain comes from a video call. A long-standing client of mine who's been a priority member, a priority Ask Dr. Lori member, as well as a video caller. And I've helped her with appraisals of many items and she's a great thrifter, as many of you are. So this piece comes from a video call and she said, well, Dr. Lori, I was at one of my favorite thrift stores. My favorite th thrift store is a really small thrift store that's run by a mom and pop, or basically a husband and wife team. And here's a lesson for all of you who don't know about thrift stores. There are big thrift door stores, there are small thrift stores. There's a lot of good stuff in all of them. So look around for them and then you'll find your favorite place too. Your favorite place might be a big thrift store but with aisles and aisles of options. But she liked this small thrift store. She wanted to support this couple that's been running this thrift store for a long time. And some of the money from their thrift store goes to a charity, like many thrift stores. So. She goes in and on this particular day, she sees this curio cabinet, which is supposed to be attached to the wall. So basically it's a wall hanging curio cabinet with all of these corn husk dolls in it. And she goes in and she's looking around and she's thinking, well, that would be a nice display cabinet for my home. I think this is kind of nice. It's got this nice metal top, kind of looks like the top you might see um, on a bird cage. It's got this nice clear glass. All the glass was intact. The clear glass shelves looked good. She said the condition was beautiful. So she said, and I liked the corn husk dolls. I thought those were nice too, but I didn't expect that I would get the corn husk dolls with the actual curio cabinet that hangs on the wall. Okay, 
But, you know, you can always hope, right? So she figured maybe it would be good. I love to get double things. I love bonuses. When someone says, oh, I'm going to throw this in, I'm happy. I love shopping. I love bonuses. So anyway, she gets this piece. She said she goes up to the front of the store and she sees the husband is running the store that day, which is kind of unusual for this little thrift store. She says, OK, um, I'm wondering how much this is. And he said, oh, well, you know, you could just take it. You could just take it. She goes, I can't just take it, you know, you know. And, and I think she was a little concerned because she knows the wife and she she's trying to, she knows they're trying to support this charity. And she said, well, no, she said, she said, well, how much is it? And he said, oh, OK, well, it's twenty dollars. And she said, well, twenty dollars just for the case. And he said, now, twenty dollars for all of it. Just take it. So she gets the curio cabinet, she gets the large cornhouse dolls, and she gets the small cornhouse dolls for $20. I know the rest of you are like, oh my gosh, I wish I was there. I know. So anyway, she, she, buy, she takes, gets the $20, gives it to the husband. The husband's happy. He's like, I made a sale. I'm very happy. The piece is about 30 inches tall, so it's pretty good size, this cabinet. And of course, it has the hooks and all, everything, so it could just hang on the wall easily. Always always make sure that if you're hanging something this heavy you're using the right hooks and you're putting it into a stud in your wall so you don't hurt your your wall so basically you don't take a crumble any of your drywall or your your plaster walls or whatever you have okay enough of that comment but so back to the real bargain so she pays the 20 bucks the the actual cabinet is worth 400 i tell her during a video call others have sold retail values of sales records from pieces that have already sold $400 for that. And then the cornhouse dolls, the large ones, there were actually, there were 10 large ones and they are $50 each, which makes them 500 bucks for those. And then there were five small ones. They're $20 each. That's $100 for those. Plus the $400 curio cabinet, $1,000 worth of dolls and cabinetry for her $20 investment. Amazing. Amazing when you get the bonus, right? So the bonus pieces, of course, were those cornhusk dolls, which would be sold individually. And she said, I think I might just keep them for now. $1,000 for her $20 investment. That's a real bargain too. And then I have this real bargain from an online appraisal submission where someone sent me a photo. And she sent me a photo of this painting a 16 by 13 inch painting by a Florida artist named Joseph Selby. Now Joseph Selby's painting is of a very famous ship called the Mary E. The Mary E is a schooner ship and it was built in Bath, Maine in 1906. It has a long standing history and today that ship after many restorations is actually in the Maine Maritime Museum. This is a painting of that ship. Oil on canvas painting, as I said, 16 by 13 inches, relatively small in a larger frame. And this piece is oil on canvas board. He painted it in Florida. Why? Because the ship would go along the eastern seaboard and would actually go from Maine to Florida regularly. This ship is a lovely example and it's a part of maritime history. Maritime painting or ship painting is very, very valuable. If you see an original ship painting, it's a good idea to pick it up. Usually they hold their value quite well if they're original oil on canvas. Joseph Selby's autograph is very distinct. It was easy to identify and recognize for me, and I appraised it for her. She bought it for $3. It's worth $1,500 with the frame. Wonderful example of our maritime history. I'm Dr. Lori. That's Real Bargains for you. I hope you find your real bargain real soon.